Columbia Court of Appeals, was written by none other than Janice Rogers Brown, the Nike supporter from the California Supreme Court. She left the California Supreme Court and was appointed by President Bush to the District of Columbia Federal Court of Appeals. She switched from state to federal. She became a judge, not on the Supreme Court, but on the Court of Appeals. She moved to Washington, D.C., where she carries on a fairly conservative, business-oriented uh, attitude. Uh, and she, for the two-to-one majority in the D.C. Circuit, struck down this requirement. Um, she pointed out that a disclosure requirement, which is basically what this is, it's not a restriction on the cigarette company's own speech, what they can say about their product. It's really a disclosure requirement. Um, and she says a disclosure requirement is appropriate only if consumers would be misled, absent the disclosure. And these, these graphic warnings are not designed to correct the history of false advertising and misleading advertising that the cigarette companies had engaged in over the decades about the healthful uh, aspects of smoking, uh, or at least the non-harmful and enjoyable aspects of smoking. These warnings weren't designed to correct what the companies had done in the past. They are rather intended to get people to quit smoking and to reduce the number of smokers, discouraging consumers from buying what is, after all, a perfectly legal product. And just Judge Brown said that these uh, graphic warnings are not purely factual and informational. They're intended to provoke an emotional response and shock people into quitting smoking. Oddly, in my view, um, Judge Brown uh, treated this issue, in this case, as a garden variety commercial speech case and applied the Central Hudson test, applying intermediate scrutiny to the government's requirement of graphic warnings uh, on the packages. Uh, it, it just doesn't seem to fit to me. The Central Hudson test is aimed at advertising speech by the companies, not at government compelled warnings that the companies have to give. Um, so I think it's a very awkward fit to try to squeeze this case into the Central Hudson format, but that's what Judge Brown did. Um, and she applied Central Hudson. She assumed that the government interest in reducing smoking by encouraging people to quit is substantial. But she couldn't restrain herself from being skeptical about the propriety um, of trying to discourage citizens from buying a lawful product. Um, but the court found that the FDA had not proved that these graphic warnings directly advanced that interest, the interest in reducing smoking. Judge Brown says the FDA has not provided a shred of evidence, much less substantial evidence, showing that the graphic warnings will directly advance its interest in reducing the number of Americans who smoke. You might think that as a matter of common sense that these graphic warnings would reduce the number of smokers, but the court insists on the government presenting evidence that they will in fact do that. Um, it's a fairly strict view of intermediate scrutiny, requiring real evidence that the number of smokers would be reduced. Nicole? You're saying that if the images are real, in the sense that they found people with tracheotomies who were still smoking, and they found somebody who was dead, who was being, they're, they're real pictures. Uh, well, I don't know whether they're real. Does it, should it matter? Should it matter? If, if they were hooked up by the government, some government contractor went out and hired people to pose, and the guy was with a zip, zipper, the autopsy zipper, was not really dead, uh, does it matter? I mean, the companies are saying, this is a scare tactics, and we're being required to carry the government message that we don't agree with at all. And it doesn't matter whether the pictures are real or, or not. The purpose is not informational, it's to scare people. Anyway, that's the, that's the argument, and that was bought by, uh, by, Judge, um, by Judge Brown, um, who concludes that the FDA simply failed to justify um, these warnings. There was a dissent, it was two to one in the Court of Appeals, um, and the dissent said that the majority had simply disregarded the industry's history of deceptive advertising, and that the majority had ignored what the dissent viewed as a separate government interest, not just the interest in reducing smoking, but the interest, the informa informational interest in effectively conveying the ne negative consequences of smoking. This would do it more, effective than, more effectively in conveying the negative consequences than simple text warnings. And she, the dissenter, Judge Rogers, uh, said that the greater the harm to the public health, the greater the government's interest is in informing consumers of those harms. Um, the FDA, uh, after the decision was handed down, petitioned the District of Columbia Circuit uh, for rehearing in bank, that is all the judges, not just a panel of three, which the court uh, denied in December. And the time for petitioning for cert, for certiorari, is just about up for the government. I talked to a government lawyer yesterday who didn't know whether they were going to file uh, in the Supreme Court or not. But uh, as I said, the case is an excellent candidate for a Supreme Court review because the Sixth Circuit last year came out the other way on these graphic warnings. And you can't have a federal law about what cigarette packages look like that can't be done in one circuit but can be done in another circuit. It's an intolerable situation. So that would be a very compelling uh, case for the court to take on certiorari. Um, I may use this case as the subject of your second paper uh, coming up next month. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's not really easy to get a handle on some of it. 
and the competing case that's percolating up toward the Supreme Court uh, is one that's in the reader uh, later on. It's the Minority Television Project case, where the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals last year decided that the federal law that prohibits public television stations from carrying uh, commercial ads, public service ads, and political ads uh, was partly constitutional and partly not. The court upheld the prohibition on commercial advertising on public television, saying that that's basically inconsistent with what public television is. But it struck down the prohibition on public service ads and political ads, which could be a big source of revenue for the public television stations. Uh, and that case, the Ninth Circuit has granted in bank rehearing. The argument in bank will be in San Francisco um, two weeks from today, right during our class. Be okay with me if you wanted to cut and go over there and sit in on that argument, which should be fascinating. But assuming you'd rather come here and think about libel, maybe more important, maybe not, um, the audio from the argument will be posted on the court's website so that you can listen to the argument, at least to beginning the night after the, after the argument. In that case, maybe the one that will be sub the subject of the paper. So to be determined. Anyway, questions about commercial speech? Anything we've covered today? Yes? Uh, what's the justification for banning tobacco ads on TV? For banning tobacco ads on TV? Yeah. I guess they, they're not allowed, right? There are all kinds of restrictions now on advertising tobacco products. And I think they're probably completely banned, at least from broadcast, right? What about cable? Yeah. HBO? Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. What's the justification for it? I guess the government has decided, I, it, it, it may be a media decision that we're not going to carry them. I don't know. Do you know? Or is there, or is there a law that says you can't advertise? I mean, Well, so product placements apparently are not prohibited, right? Uh, so you can sneak it in that way. But I, I do believe that you're right that there's no, so what's the justification? I guess the government does not want to encourage pe people to be encouraged to smoke. It's good government policy, isn't it? Yeah, especially in light of the history of deceptive advertising by the tobacco industry over the years. I take it that to the extent there's a prohibition on that, that kind of advertising now, that's considered to be corrective, corrective of the previous harm that was done by cigarette ads. The Marlboro Man, and Macho, is that another thing? So, yeah? Well, I, I mean, calling it a commercial speech case just seems odd because it's not their speech. I don't think it would be um, sufficient to, to treat it just like Wooly, just like the license plate case that Jehovah's Witnesses license plate. say, oh, it's compelled speech that, that the coerced speaker doesn't believe in, therefore it violates the First Amendment. I think that's too simple. And the court would have to do some interest analysis. What's the government interest here? Is it served by the restriction? You know, going through the Central Hudson steps is okay. But uh, where this is a, I, I don't want to confuse matters, but there's a Supreme Court case called Zauderer, Z-A-U-D-E-R-E-R, -E -E that the court had to deal with in the cigarette packaging case. That was a disclosure case where uh, lawyers, yeah, lawyers, were forced to disclose when they're advertising their fees that the potential clients who hire them may be liable for costs if they win. And the lawyers advertising didn't say that. And the state said, you've got to disclose the whole picture to the consumers. And the court considered that case and said there's a distinction between a disclosure case and which requires you to say something, and a restriction on what you're saying. And it's easier to justify a disclosure requirement than it is to justify a restriction on speech. Well, the court in the D.C. Circuit case, the cigarette case, distinguished Zauderer and said the disclosure cases only apply where consumer deception would result absent the disclosure. And there's no consumer deception in the cigarette context because everybody knows that cigarettes are extremely hazardous to your health. And nobody's being deceived about the health, healthfulness of cigarette smoking. Okay, Thursday we do a review for the midterm.